Hey guys, what's up? Uh, got this SSR, I guess it's a SSR 110. Um, I picked it up from a guy, he said it uh, ran good uh, and then had an electrical issue. He said this, the end of this uh, spark plug thing popped off and it wouldn't work so I thought that's easy. I have one of these back at my shop so I threw it on, put it on, has spark but won't start. So. Definitely has other issues going on. Um, I don't think he was being too honest about it. So now I'm a little stumped. So he it looks like he put a brand new carb on it. This carb is uh, clean, looks very new. Um, and it has spark, so it's definitely getting fuel. It's definitely getting spark. I don't, I don't know. This one's stumping me. Um, my guess, well, he did say the guy before him put a 125 top end no no sorry a 110 top end on a 125 bottom end and he said he adjusted the valve so i asked him what he adjusted the valve clearance to he couldn't tell me didn't seem like he knew a lot about them so i'm thinking maybe he had the has the valve clearances messed up and that's why it's not starting so <clears throat> i'm going to attempt here to adjust the valves um see if that helps so the valves you will find inside this cap on the top will be your intake valve and on the bottom will be your exhaust valve so you unplug that um yeah so let's see what's going on here hopefully I figure this out all right guys first step here uh to adjust the valve lash you want to remove your shift lever, the, the bolt here, back that out, slide that off. Then we're going to remove this cover. And then you can remove this, this side <clears throat> of your uh, timing chain cover just so we can check to make sure our uh, top dead center here. Well, you'll see it then. So anyhow, I'm going to do that quick and then check back in. In order to remove this cover, there's a bolt that goes the whole way across the engine. On the other side here, it's a 10 millimeter bolt right here. I already loosened it here to show you. Nice long bolt. Slide that out. Should be able to pop a screwdriver in right here. Pop this thing off. Alright guys, now you got that cover off. You got that cover off. You want to uh, make sure this thing's at top dead center. So I know this is a little debatable, but from what I've read, you want this line at the T, not the F. You want the T to line up with the notch that's on the side of the cylinder. So you see this notch up here? The T right there lines up. All right. And then this, there should be a little mark on, on your cam sprocket here. It lines up with a mark on the engine. So, if you look closely here, there's like a chunk taken out of the side here. So, that's what's lining it up, right? Sorry, I have to shift that there, right there. Generally, it's 90 to the, or, uh, in parallel with the front of the bike. So, that's where that's lining up. And that's where we're going to set our timing at, right there. So... All right, guys, next step, we're going to adjust the intake va uh, valve clearance. So you're going to want to get the, the wrench, pull this cap off, and we'll see what's going on. All right, guys, cap came off, 17 millimeter wrench. Put it on there, turn it a couple times, it comes off real nice and easy. All right, so now you can see your uh, valve adjustment right here. So first check. When this thing's at top dead center and you move this, it should move slightly. So if you look, we're moving it and it does have a tiny bit of movement, which makes me think that uh, it's probably fine. This is probably not the issue, but uh, we're going to check it anyway. So you're going to want to pick up a feeler gauge. I got this one from uh, Advanced Auto. I don't know, it was like six bucks or something. So. Um, unfortunately, the lowest gauge it has is uh, 004, 
and these things are supposed to adjust to like 003 intake side, 004, 005 exhaust side. Some guys even go 002 on the intake side, but I can't because mine's not that small. So. Anyway, um, feel free to bend these. They come nice and straight, but they're cheap. It's just a thin piece of metal. The thickness of the metal is what determines your uh, valve gauge or your spacing here. So, in between this and your valve, at top dead center, there should be a gap. So, you should be able to slide this in. Yeah, see, I can slide that in. Actually, pretty easy. So I'm going to loosen this nut right here and then tighten this square bolt down and then we'll tighten up on this. So when it tightens up, we're going to tighten it gently so that we can still pull this out and that'll uh, set our valve clearance. Then we can tighten the nut back up. So, Alright, we'll do that now. Alright, so fuel gauge was in, we adjusted it. Turns out this nut is a 9mm. I uh, used a little wrench to adjust the square bolt and then tighten it down. So we got her set to a tight 004 on the gauge. So you just leave that in there while you tighten this and then you tighten the nut on it. So um, intake valve is set. So now we will do the exhaust side. So once again, put your 17mm uh, no wrench on there. Not functional. Screw it. All right, so here's your exhaust valve. Now, we want to check and see if that clearance is correct. All right, same deal as before. Loosen the nut. Make sure this thing's still set at uh, the T for top dead center. I mean, close enough, right? It's just a pit bike. And, uh, <clears throat> I, that's sort of a joke. We're trying to get this thing running, make it run good. But uh, you're not racing these things. The clearance, the tolerances and things are not that close. So, all right, loosen this nut. Same deal, adjust this little square bolt out until you can feel it. And this one you can see, this thing is locked tight. I think this one's a little too tight. We'll see, maybe this will fix it. All right guys, so we got it adjusted. Set to 005, but that's good. And uh, because I over tightened this and broke that off, broke this little piece off, I have nothing to hold the gasket on anymore. So, the thing's junk. Shame on me. Good thing I got lots of parts bikes. We're uh, gonna yank one off another thing over here. And uh, we'll keep moving on and I'll order another one later. All right, get your covers back on. Try to start it, see what happens. All right guys, so after all that, got it all back together, still not starting here. So um, I'm just gonna start one thing at a time. And sometimes things seem like they're fine, but then they really aren't as fine as you think. Like, so now I'm thinking maybe this spark plug, although it's brand new, uh, is uh, like a cheapo Chinese one so I got brand new spark plug to put in and uh, we'll see we'll do one thing at a time here I got some other things I'm gonna try um, and uh, yeah we'll see hopefully we can figure this thing out before I throw it out for the trash all right so new spark plugs in let's see if it starts Hear that squeaking noise? We'll talk about that next. Alright, I didn't think it was a spark plug. No, I'm pretty sure it's not a spark plug. Um, that squeaking noise is actually the exhaust gasket. Um, I wasn't sure what it was at first, but once fuel starts getting through, it's leaking in the front here. So, um, I actually got an exhaust gasket. I don't think that would keep it from running, but it's annoying anyway, so I figured I'd throw that on. We'll do that next. 
always try one step at a time because you replace a whole bunch of stuff and it's possible one of the things you add could become the problem. Um, so even if you fixed what was the problem and created another one, back where you started. So one step at a time, we'll do the exhaust gasket now and see what happens. All right guys, new exhaust gaskets in. Let's try again. Still getting that squeaking noise. Very strange. Um, hmm. Oh. Oh, I think I found my problem. That is oil. So I guess what I thought was the exhaust gasket is a head gasket. So appears this gasket is shot. Oh, man. So that guy definitely knew that when he sold it to me. I thought it was strange. He said it wasn't running when I bought it. It was missing this piece here. I just thought anybody with a little sense can put that piece back on. I think he yanked it off just to say it didn't run. The reality was it's a head gasket. So, boy, looks like this is gonna be a little more work than I was planning. All right, well, guess I'm gonna have to watch some YouTube videos, figure out how to do a head gasket. No point in me re-explaining uh, re that. I'm sure 100 people have done that, so hopefully we get it running. Thanks for watching.